Hi guys. Okay, so today is more of a chit chat. Um, and it's about, um, I get lots of questions about how I keep uh, my resin bubble free or how I reduce the bubbles, the amount of bubbles that I get in my resin. There are many different ways and um, lots of people do things differently. Um, these are just the things that, I've got a couple of things that you know you can try but I've also got sort of the things that work best for me. It depends on um, your climate so if you live in a really warm climate um, then things will be different than if you live somewhere that's really cold and it also depends on where you're working. If you're working outside in um, a garage, uh, a lean-to, you know, a shed and your air temperature is naturally colder or slightly windier um, then you will find your resin reacts much different. Um, so yeah, it, it, it very much depends. So, but these are just a few of the hints and tips that I've used um, and the ones I prefer. If you have any other ways that you find um, work better for you, then absolutely um, leave a comment in the, in the uh, comments below. That would be absolutely very appreciated. There, are, there may be other ways that I'm not aware of that might be fantastic and we can all learn together and all help each other. Okay, so the first one um, I'm going to mention is the type of resin you use. Now, lots of people um, have lots of different ways, but it do does depend on the, on the resin that you use. What works for a fast cure resin may not work for a slow cure resin and vice versa. So, um, if you've watched my videos for any length of time, I have tried many different resins. Um, and my preferred resin is always Epoxy Plast. Now Epoxy Plast have several different resins and the two that I've used is Epoxy Plast 100 and Epoxy Plast 3D. Now out of those, 3D is my slight favourite um, because it's thicker and with the, um, with the thicker resin um, I can, I've found that with my style of work I can do a little bit more. Um, but if you have a slower curing resin, it tends to be thicker um, and because it takes a long time to cure, your resin will naturally degas better um, because it has, it is um, warmer for longer before it starts the curing process, before it starts to harden um, and quite often if you have a fast curing resin, and some of those bubbles haven't risen to the surface, they will trap much easier in a faster curing resin. The faster curing resins I have tried, um, I didn't like very much and I didn't get on as well with them. But I haven't tried that many fast curing resins because I quite early on realised that I preferred the longer working time, the slower curing resins and they also, because my moulds normally are slightly deeper and therefore a slower curing resin is better for the type of things that I use. Um, so the first one then is it's the type of resin. Second, um, while you're mixing and pouring your resin you need to do it slowly. If you are mixing fast, in my videos you'll see I speed it up because I mix quite slowly. Um, so I look like I'm, I'm mixing really really quickly but I'm not. Um, you want to mix slowly and you want to um, you don't want to keep putting it up and down and up and down because you're, re you're introducing um, more bubbles. So it's slowly, slowly scraping sides, slow mixing, slow pouring. So when you're pouring your, your part A and your part B, um, pour slowly. Therefore you're not introducing bubbles in there before you've even started mixing. And when you pour your resin into your mould, pour slowly and pour more to the side uh, and not from high, pour down low. If you pour it high then you are, as soon as the resin hits, it is going to create that big bubble. 
try and pour in one continuous pour instead of stopping and starting, stopping and starting. Um, and it depends on what project you're doing, obviously. Um, but if you pour lower and slower, you are going to be naturally on a winner. Um, then the third, uh, third tip is to, if possible, now if you're using, this works better with a slow curing resin, if you're using a fast curing resin, you won't have as much work time. But if you let your resin sit before you pour, um, then, so once you've mixed your resin, if you let it sit for 15, 20, 30 minutes if you can, if you have that work time, then your resin will naturally degas um, before you pour. And then pour slow and low. And you should have um, much less chance of the... And also, when your resin sits, it normally gets thicker. And thicker resin poured slower will produce less bubbles than a thinner resin poured fast. Um, the next thing, um, tip number four, is heating your resin. Um, bef now there are a couple of different ways of doing this. Um, the first way is to mix your resin and then heat it in your pot with um, a heat gun. I love my heat gun. When I have poured and let my resin sit a little while, or if I'm in a bit of a hurry and I haven't got time to let it sit for half an hour because I'm going on a school run or I've got you know, plenty of things on, I will hit it with my heat gun and you will see the bubbles just rise. And then I will stir very slowly and then I will, a couple of sort of 10, 15 second blast and I will stir and you will feel the resin get warm. I don't mean sit there for a minute with this on there and burn the resin, that's, that's not cool. But if you slowly keep blasting and stirring, you will feel in your hands um, the resin start to heat and the bubbles will naturally, the warmer the resin, they will naturally release. The way many people do it, I do not like this method and I'll tell you why, um, but many people heat their resin, their part A and their part B, in their bottles, in a water bath, and it heats both parts, then they mix it together and the resin is naturally warm, and when they mix, it naturally degasses. Now the reason I don't like this is um, I can get a little bit clumsy. I can, now if you've watched me resin, you will see I drip everything everywhere. By the time I've finished, glitter, resin, everything is all over the place. So when I tried the water method, Sure, my resin was warmer, but I dripped water all over the place. And I, so the next time I tried to be really careful and I wiped all, the, and I, I just, um, I, I didn't get on with it. Water and resin do not mix. If you get one spot of water in your resin, that's it. It goes cloudy, it ruins, it does not set properly, it does not cure. So, that is the reason I do not like the water method, but many, many people use it and they have great success with it. But the, ho the whole, um, the long and the short of it is heating your resin before you mix, or once you've mixed, if you've got a longer cure resin, um, th that really does help to reduce bubbles. If you live in a great warm climate, um, you will have less and that is why you will have less issues with bubbles anyway, because your atmosphere is warm. Your resin may cure faster, but your atmosphere is warm and you will have less issues with bubbles on a whole. Okay. Let's have a little look. I've got some notes to the side of me, that's why I'm just reading to make sure I'm not missing anything. Ah, now, tip, that was number four and five. So tip number six. Now this is an odd phenomenon. And it may be due to the tiny particles that hit the resin. But I find, if I add... Now, many of the people, you know, you might not find this at all. I'll just get my cup of tea. I find if I add even a tiny pinch of glitter into my resin, it reduces my bubbles. Now, you obviously, as you're stirring, you need to stir slowly, you need to mix slowly, so that you don't reintroduce those bubbles. But adding a pinch of glitter into your resin seems to help 
with the bubbles. I can, I've tried it where I've mixed really, really, really fast and I've got thousands of little, tiny little bubbles in there. And then I put in, um, you know, a little measure of glitter and I mix slowly and all of a sudden my resin is not, it just seems to debubble. Um, there's there's probably and somebody's going to tell me there's probably some great science behind that with the particles in, in releasing the air and things like that but for me it works um it may not for the people but for me and the resin i use and it's fine glitter not chunky really fine glitter and it and it works it helps me no end um so the next thing number seven is tapping your molds to help release the bubbles now you will often see me and i get asked a lot what are you doing? So I will often um, tap the sides of my mould to release any bubbles from the bottom. So you'll see me tap, I'll move them around. If it's uh, normally I won't pull right to the top straight away, I'll pull halfway down and I'll tap the bubbles and then I will slowly pour in the next stop and you will often see me tapping the sides of my moulds. And that is, that is, especially with the deep moulds, if you tap you will find, you will see bubbles release. So you can tap, you can fill three quarters and you can tap some more and it really does help. For complicated moulds, um, so this one is more complicated but this one here is a perfect example. So for complicated moulds I often pour a little bit of resin in first. Now with this one I will, I've got a brush here but it's, it's not the brush I use, but I will often brush um, I have several brushes that are designated to resin only and I will brush resin into all the nooks and crannies before I pour. Now with this one I will pour, I would pour a little bit of resin in and I would squish and squish and squish and squish all the way around and I would coat the whole of the inside of the mould with resin. And then what that does is because if you pour resin and you have a and it happens sometimes and you have a dry pocket in the very bottom of the mould. The resin will often, and you can't always see through these moulds, you can't always see through to see if there's an air pocket there. It will often um, prevent the resin from going all the way to the corners. And it's not, it, you may have done everything else right. But in the, introducing the resin to the dry mould, it quite often, the the dryness of the mould will sort of hold on almost to a pocket of air and will prevent the resin going into that corner. So by pouring in a little bit of resin and wetting all areas, every single bit of the mould, you are, you are wetting that mould, you are stopping any chance of a dry corner um, holding on to the air and not letting the resin seamlessly pull through everything. So I will often pour, squish, pour, squish, and you'll see me repeat and repeat. Um, you could also paint inside. If you can get in there, you could also paint inside the mould. Um, but the, 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 some of the really more complicated moulds um, with, I've done chess pieces, uh, and those, those, the chess pieces, actually I didn't bring one up, the chess pieces are tricky. They have so many little tiny pieces. Um, that by squishing all the resin around, the first few I did, there was holes everywhere. I was missing pieces. It was it was ridiculous. Um, but when I started to squish and get the whole mould wet, I had absolutely so much more success. It was unbelievable. Okay, so number nine. So that's the, that's sort of self-explanatory. Use a skewer. Now with these here, where you've got, again, this is a mould that I would wet and I would squish. Um, but you can also release air. Now quite often once you've poured your resin in and you've squished and you've made sure there's no bubbles in the bottom, keep squishing the sides, make sure all those bubbles are out. Then I would go along with a skewer and I would just wipe along the whole of the mould and I will keep pulling into the centre, pulling into the centre and just helping those bubbles release. The other thing you can do is lift and because the, the reason bubbles get trapped in here, because they can't escape. They're not going to come up, come up, and then they naturally sit here, you see. They're not going to sort of come out and pop up. So if you lift every couple of centimetres, you will find bubbles will 
be able to release much easier than sort of just you know um, relying on sort of gravity to help. But if you release the sides, that does help. And then go around with a skewer every little piece of that mould, run it all the way to the bottom, you could do it with a paintbrush, run it all the way to the bottom and hopefully, and by doing all those steps, by tapping, when I'm using this mould, I'm squishing, I'm tapping and I'm using the skewer, I'm doing everything because the worst thing is when you've done these moulds um, and then you, un you release it and you have a small bubble on the top and it just, it is, it's heart wrenching I tell you. Um, the other thing you can do is when everything's in there and let's say you filled the mould right to the top, you now cannot lift that mould. You now don't want to tap that mould because you don't want to overspill. I will then go in with my heat gun and I will heat around. For a few seconds I will just run my heat gun around, all the way around every single piece and I will slowly, slowly lift and if there's any bubbles left and I've, after I've done all of that and I've still found a bubble. If you heat that resin round the bottom there and lift, your resin will naturally degas better. So, after you've done all that and um, you're, you're pretty sure, come back every 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, depending on how fast curing your resin is, and check on your resin. You may still find, because it happens after you've done all that, all of a sudden you find a bubble, especially in these sort of little pieces here. Now if your resin is still very liquidy, you can then come in with a toothpick, um, skewer, whatever, and try and release that bubble. If your resin um, has, once you've poured your resin and you've heated the top, now you can use a lighter, you can use a hairdryer, you can use a heat gun, and you've released all the bubbles from the top, and you've come back, and let's say your resin is now half cured and it's thick and you now do not want to put anything into that resin because you are going to it's going to go stringy it's going to ruin it's going to it's going to be awful um, I've also had it where I've forgotten to cover the top of the resin and I've had like a baby fly or something drop in the top of my resin or a piece of glitter and I'm like oh gosh so and this is probably the best tip that I could give you is go back in with your heat gun. Heat the surface of your resin evenly all the way across. You will see your resin become glossy again and melt. Once this happens that top layer of your resin is now more liquid than the underneath and it depends on how thick it is and you heat and heat, test and it will be runnier. Now you'll have to do a test piece first because obviously everybody's resin works differently but with my resin that I've used if you then heat that top piece you can I had to pick out the poor fly um, but you will find your your bubbles if you've had a bubble form it will hopefully then release the other thing that's good for is if you've ever come back to a, um, a piece of resin and you've got like um, a cloudy film on the top and you look to the side and you think oh it's beautiful and then you see these swirls of cloudy film like oh where on earth did that come from that can be the temperature has changed in the work room you're working in you may have a breeze a draft something like that um, and that can cause that sort of frosty appearance if you heat it um, and you keep heating it that will go um, I've had to do that sometimes a couple of times and it will go and it will leave a beautiful um, finish to the top of your piece um, if you find that um, it's you've left your resin and it's slightly uneven then you can even up your mould um, but let's say it's too thick now to level out heat your resin with your heat this is my best friend heat your resin with your heat gun not blasting it too long you don't want to burn it heat it slowly and let it come back to a liquid state and it will once you've leveled your mould it will have a beautiful finish um, so I think that is everything. Um, yeah. I think that's everything. If you have any hints, hints or tips for anybody else, for me or anybody and you'd like to share your knowledge, there are, I've been working with resin for sort of three or four years, 
there's many people who've been working with resin for 10, 15, longer years. If you have any tips and tricks that you would like to share, absolutely, please share. We are um, very open and honest um, in this uh, YouTube family. Share, we would love, and I would certainly love to hear from you. If you have any questions, I will do my best always to, fight it, to answer them. If I don't know the information, I will hunt it down for you and I will find out for you. But I think that's it for today. Thank you ever so much for your time. I do appreciate you watching. If you're still here right to the end, you are fantastic. Please like and subscribe. It helps my little tiny channel to grow. And I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.